Namaste, fam. Wolfcore here, and welcome to Divinity Original Sin 2, the definitive edition. It's really bright in here, so I'm going to put these bad boys on. <sighs> Much better. Much better. So, this will be the first time that you have seen this game on this channel. What's up, zombie? How you doing, brother? Uh, so, we are going to have to do a little bit of technical editing today as we live stream to make sure the game audio isn't too loud and all of that sort of stuff, so bear with me, fam. And, uh, yeah, this is a game that I discovered uh, about three weeks ago and have been absolutely obsessed with. I have just about completed my first playthrough on my own, uh, which I wanted to do on my own because this game does have a bit of a learning curve to it. I've never played another game quite like it. But it was time I wanted to share it with you guys and start a new character, and it is going to be completely different than the character that I've done prior to this, uh, so we're going to be going to be taking it in a brand new direction, so why don't we come over to story. And so I arrive, but the stream doesn't appear to be up yet. It appears to be up to me. I'm here. I'm here. I don't know. I don't know. I hope the stream's working for you, because it's working for me. Uh, so we're going to come over to lay single player. We're going to go for tactician mode, which is hard mode, the hardest mode. And we're going to go for regular, which means that it isn't permadeath. I'm not good enough at the game yet to not die at all. But I do want to play on hard difficulty. Final warning! There will be no changing your game's difficulty after this. Are you sure you want to continue in tactician mode? Yes. Yes, I do. My current character is also on tactician mode, and I've gotten all the way up to act four. About halfway through, so, uh, feeling pretty confident. I have arrived as the prophecy foretold. What's up, Brave? Thank you for getting here so quickly. Same to you, zombie. Always a pleasure, gentlemen. So, I have an idea, a general idea for this build that I want to do. I think we're going to be playing as the elf character, uh, Sib Sybil. I don't know. Uh, because I like her ability flesh sacrifice we're gonna be going for like a rogue character and flesh sacrifice i think in addition to adrenaline i think is gonna work really well oi oi what's up benny g how are you player well i just got the original and i'm playing through it nice zella how are you zella thank you for coming uh so i think our main character is going to be the elf pre-built character because i I want to stick with the pre-built pre characters for the sake of uh, experiencing their storylines. Uh, we are going to be going for a rogue character. We are going to be going lone wolf, so it's only going to be us and one other member in our group. We're not going to have four because I feel like that's just too much to deal with. I'll probably do that eventually, but I want to get really good at the game before I have to handle four different characters. So, how do we... Conjurer, Enchanter, Fighter, Inquisitor, Knight... Metamorph, Ranger, Rogue. So we're going to be doing Rogue, so we're going to be, uh, uh, whatever the, the Rogue skills are. We're going to be doing Rogue and Polymorph. That's my plan, at least. I shaved off my beard three days ago. It feels weird to not have a beard, lol. Yeah, I saw the picture on the Discord. Sorry I didn't say anything. Um, but yeah. Hey man, you look good. It's okay. And who is that? Is that Cryptic? What's up, Cryptic? How are you, player? Thank you for coming by the stream. Uh, so I think we're just gonna kind of customize this. I think, I guess we can customize your hair. Why not? How about, I was hoping for flamey red, but I think we're just gonna go with some black hair. Hairstyle? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Creepy. Uh, ooh, elves have funky ass hair, yo. Funk, yeah. That's kind of pretty. That's sort of the Asian thing going on. I'm down. Uh, skin color, wheat. Uh, wow, you can make them like night black. That's kind of cool. But I think we're just going to go for alabaster and for zafas. Uh, can I zoom in a little bit? There we go. Ooh, she's pretty. Kind of like face one. I think we're going to go with that. Ooh. Uh, yeah. 
yeah, face one. Face one works for me. <clears throat> now I can do this again. Yes, zombie. You post those squids, good sir. You post them. And, and I can do this. Oh, wait. I can't post emotes unless I minimize the game. It's not worth it. Um. Okay, happy with that. We're going to come over to Lay Talents. We're going to drop the pawn and we're going to pick up Lone Wolf. What Lone Wolf does, for those of you who are not familiar with this game, is you're meant to play this game essentially with 40, four party members. And it's a very slow turn-based game, so that's kind of a lot to handle. Lone Wolf essentially cuts that in half, but it makes your two characters substantially stronger in basically every way. So rather than having four average characters, you have two really strong characters, which I kind of like. And I've already done a Lone Wolf playthrough, so I kind of understand how it works. So we're going to stick with that for now. Uh, I need to... Let's see. We're going to edit this. We're going to not go for Constitution right now. We're going to go for... Do we want to put six points in Finesse? Hey, Brave. Thank you for the bits. Appreciate you, sir. Appreciate you. We could put all six points into Finesse to do the most damage, or... We could put points into Constitution to give ourselves a bit more health. Or we could put points into Wits to give us more crit damage. But I think I'm just going to go with uh, all points into Finesse for right now. For m maximum damage potential. Uh, let's see, we've got... we got to put points in Scoundrel. That's a given. Because our primary... St oh... I guess I could put points into Polymorph? Yes. Okay, so we're going to drop dual wielding. We're going to pick up a couple points in Polymorph. Um, for Act 1, I'm going to take Thievery. Because the ability to steal the spell books that you want for your character build is absolutely huge in the early game because you have no gold to buy spells. And there's a lot of spells that you're going to want to pick up. A lot of gear that you're going to want to get that you're not able to afford. But after Act 1, you can respec any character at any time for free. So we're probably going to drop Thievery then when it stops becoming important. And pick up Persuasion. Because I've never had Persuasion and I think it would be really useful. So let's go ahead and confirm that. And then we are going to customize our skills. Uh, we definitely want Backlash. Throwing Knives is probably meh. Um, as for Polymorph, we definitely want Chameleon Cloak. That's going to be able to turn us invisible. And Chicken Claw would probably be really good. Chameleon Cloak and Chicken Claw are the main things that we're going to want from Polymorph. So we're good on that front. And then Backlash is going to help us get behind targets and just deal damage in general. So that all seems good there. Let's go for tags. We cannot adjust the tags on a pre-built character. What do we have, though? Ooh, we do have Scholar, which is something that I want, because that opens up a lot of various things. We're a Scholar Outlaw, and I like the cello. So I think we are ready to start. Continue. Yes. This is one of the few games I've meant to look at, but never had the time. It's really, really good. It's very, very slow, very time consuming, but it's a very, very solid RPG. One of the best I've ever played, to be honest. It all happened like I knew it would. A single drop of source magic. And like flies to honey, the monsters swarmed. The rebel panicked. The carnage began. The Magisters pointed their fingers at me. Just as I'd planned. Me, 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 me. I was shackled and collared. And sent to Fort Joy. Sorry. Cursor was on the middle of the screen. I'd come here to kill God Woken. But instead, I became part of their story. Yeah. Divinity Original Sin 2, fam. 
Uh, that neck on her makes me feel odd. Yeah, the elves in this game look super weird, but I don't know. We're just going to have to deal. I'll be honest, I have no clue what any of this means, but I like it. That's okay. That's okay. Still a bit groggy, Context will come with time. Don't worry. The sedative will wear off soon enough. <laughs> Creepy bitch that woman is. Uh, fair warning, this is a very slow-paced game, and I'm going to do my absolute utmost best not to skip dialogue options. So there is going to be a lot of NPC talking in this game, so you're just going to have to bear with me. Easy now. No need to hurry. Get your bearings and report to me upstairs. All right. So we are a sorcerer in a mystical, magical world. And uh, this group uh, called the Magisters. What a dismal way to wake in the belly of the beast. Let's see if I can grope my way out. <laughs> um, so we've been taken by this group called the Magisters. The Magisters are rounding up all the sorcerers because there are certain sorcerers who have the ability to use something called source magic. This is a new thing in the world as far as I know. Uh, source magic is causing a problem because it's attracting these monsters called the Void Woken when you use it. And the Void Woken are just like mindless fuck. Well, they're not mindless. They're highly intelligent, but they are just killing machines. They do not like humans. So the Magisters are uh, on the surface, at least, using this as a reason to round up all of the sorcerers. And we are one of said sorcerers. They have put this collar around our neck, which makes us unable to use source magic. We can still use regular magic, simply not source magic. As you can see, we have one source ability right here that is completely unusable at the moment, so might as well just scooch that right over there. What's up, sheep? Shaking her fluffy coat, the sheep eyes you balefully. Her rectangular eyes like letterboxes to the void. With one sharp hoof, she kicks you right in the shit. Bitch. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you, sheep. Don't fucking kick me, you bitch. I will murder. I don't have a knife yet. I have no weapons. I'm not going to slowly beat that sheep to death with my hands. We're definitely going to want to be looking through all crates, all chests, every lootable thing in the early game. Like Act 1, because we have such limited resources. But eventually, I will not be looting this much. So, uh, again, fair warning. It's a slow-paced game, but you're going to like it, I promise. Uh, food. We can take all this food. We can use it as healing items. And bread, sure. That letter right there. You know what? In fact, I'm just going to do my best to try and read all of the little documents that are scattered around the game. Oh, I thought the sheep was talking to you at first. Uh, you can actually talk to animals in this game. There is a talent called Pet Pal. Uh, Pet Pal is going to enable you to have real, like, human-on-human -human dialogue with animals, uh, which is kind of neat, kind of useful. It can uh, reveal some fun little things. It can open up some cute little quests, but it's not super important, so I don't have Pet Pal on this character. Let's see. Orders from Guard Steward. Important. It comes to my attention again that several of you are bypassing the cargo hold security measures by sliding boxes onto the pressure plates. This will not do... The purpose of these measures is to require the presence of at least three Magisters at a change of shift. Any deviation will result in at least one Magister getting thrown overboard. Make sure it isn't you. Magister Sawan. And I don't see any reason why we would need to hold on to that. Yeah, I don't like that angle. Alright, let's just keep looting this room, see if we can find anything else useful. A healing potion. Why, yes, thank you. Um, so these would be the pressure plates that the letter referred to. Let's throw that on there. That on there. And we get Le Pocket Knife. As a rogue, we are going to be using knives. Probably for this whole playthrough. I think we can alternatively go with... No, no we can't. We have to use knives. Um, knives are required for scoundrel builds. Let's see. Uh, 
Oh, I thought... Oh, no, I already read that. Ship reminds me of Arcanum game a bit. Interesting. Oh, Sheep reminds me of Arcanum game a bit. I'm not familiar with that one. Pet Pal, that makes me think of something entirely different. <laughs> what were you thinking about, you dirty bird? And Exo Gaming, hi, what's up, player? Thank you for coming by the stream. Hey, hey, get me out of this cage and I'll make it worth your while. Oh? You in? I am carefully. Why is he in this cage in the first place? Your guess is as good as mine. Someone screamed loud as a banshee. After that, pure pandemonium. They never even told me what I was accused of. Just dragged me down here. I don't trust your voice. But I'll, I'll agree to help. among jesters, you are. Give that lever a pull, and I guarantee we'll both get something out of the deal. Uh, what's in it for me? Set me free, and I'll set you free. A fair trade, I should think. Hey. Right. Uh, Exo Gaming, no stream yesterday. I actually fully intended to do a live stream. Uh, but I don't know if you're familiar with the show Stranger Things. But there was a new season of Stranger Things that dropped. And I was like, oh, well, I'm going to watch this. And then, uh, lo and behold, I marathoned the whole season. And by the time I was like, oh, shit, it's Friday. Uh, what time is my live stream? It was like 7.45 and I was like, fuck. Well, guess I'm live streaming tomorrow instead. All right, so we do have the ability to uh, pickpocket people thanks to our perk thievery. And fuck this magister. I'm just gonna stab him in the back. Well, Don't kick me, you cunt. We are gonna blink behind him and stab him. Uh, just to go over the combat system very quickly for those of you new to the game. Uh, you are limited. It's a turn-based game, right? Sort of like Diablo meets Skyrim meets Final Fantasy. Um, so you're limited each turn by these action points that you can see right here. Because we are doing a lone wolf playthrough, I will by default have six action points on my characters each time it's their turn. There are things that you can do to affect that, like using Flesh Sacrifice. So I can take some of my health to give myself an extra action point. And various things like doing an auto attack takes two action points. Uh, using skills like Chameleon Cloak will take one action point that's going to turn me invisible. Obviously, that wasn't the optimal way to do that, but just to give you a sense of how the combat works. And all Magisters will die before our blade, because fuck the Magisters, they are assholes. Let's let this bitch out. The prisoner's buoyant voice dies as his eyes rest on yours. Oh, freedom. Tastes better than wine. Does it? Nothing if not a man of my word. And I did give my word I'd set you free, lass. Say your prayers while you've breath to speak them. Oh my. Oh my. This bitch is looking for a fight. Ow! Don't light me on fire, you cunt. You lit yourself on fire, stupid. Alright, let's go ahead and blink behind him. Let's stab him in the back. Stab him in the back again. Then we're going to use a skill called Sucker Punch. We only have Sucker Punch right now because we have a free hand. One of our hands does not have a weapon in it, so we were able to knock him down, so he had to spend his turn standing back up. The ability to CC targets is extremely strong in this game. Nice. I need to keep my guard up. Alright, I am going to take a little nap in his bed to get my health back. Yes, I only watched one episode. I got bored. You got bored of Stranger Things? It's such a good show, though. I don't know how you got bored, but hey, to each their own. All right, got our health back. Let us continue to explore. Uh, there's nothing in here. I could use one of these buckets as a helmet, but it reduces my initiative, so I'm not going to bother with that nonsense. I'm glad your stream popped up. I've been playing far too much of JoJo fighting games, LMAO. This knocked me out of it. Well, good. I'm glad to be of service to you. Let's take some empty potion bottles. Some more of that shiz. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Finding stuff and things. Nothing there. 
Another healing potion. Excellent. Another healing potion. Now we can throw that candle into said poison to explode it. But there's a nifty little trick with ooze barrels where you can actually combine the barrel with your weapon. Our weapon does 3 to 4 damage currently. Now it does 3 to 4 damage plus 1 to 2 poison damage. So that is a substantial attack upgrade. Now that barrel is super fucking heavy, so we're going to want to find a place to drop that as soon as possible. But for the time being, it's going to be fine. Now, let's take that candle, throw it into the poison. That'll burn off in just a second, so let's just finish looting the room. Felt it was slower than the first two seasons, so I watched the last stream. Oh, nice. Well, I appreciate that. The fact that you would rather watch my stream, assuming you're talking about my stream, but you would rather watch my stream than uh, Stranger Things is quite flattering, so thanks. I don't know why that door was locked, but we can just knock it down. For some reason, that poisoned me. I guess there was still technically some poison there. Maybe a bug. I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, anything else in here? Alright, let's go kill that fucking sheep. Nowhere to go but up. Kicky McGee. Not gonna kick me and get away get away with it, you dumb sheep. I'm coming for your mutton. Yeah. Ow. Ow, fuck! <laughs> Am I gonna die to a sheep? Nah. We can just sucker punch it. Knock it down. Waste its turn. Get behind the target. Stab you away. So I think backstabs, this is my first rogue character, but I believe backstabs are guaranteed criticals, which is really nice. Really, really nice. Though I unfortunately have to go anyway. I'll catch the next stream. Might be back in might be back in later. See you people. Bye zombie. Thank you for chilling, brother. I'll see you soon. Alright. So that is the tutorial. Not super necessary to do, but it does give you some healing potions, which are useful. So we did it. Let's grab that Mortar and Pestle. Uh, we can use that for various things and stuff. Got some more potions. Jawless Skull. We can use that Mortar and Pestle for stuff like this. I don't know a lot about the crafting system, but I do know a few tricks. So we can grind that skull up. It was worth 60 gold. Now it's worth 150 gold as it in its current form bone dust. So you can do little things like that. No, 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 no. I don't want those. That was an accident. Get out of my inventory. Yeah. Empty. Empty. Uh, sheets of paper are kind of valuable. I was hoping you would die to a sheep. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. Let's grab that golden cup. It's worth a decent amount of gold. And this lady doesn't seem to mind that we're stealing all her stuff, so Why, you're looking cool. a bit more chipper. Yes. Looks like that collar fit you snugly. Uh, True Brew Whisperwood. There are a number of books that will grant you crafting recipes if you read them. So we're going to take that. We learned how to make a small armor potion. Not the worst thing in the world. Let's talk to this bitch. Not too tight, I hope. The collar, I mean. Oh, not to worry. Every dog has to get used to its leash. Uh, is the third season better or the same as the other ones? I would say it was just as good. I really enjoyed it. Definitely worth the watch. I mean, I marathoned the whole thing in one day, so do with that what you will. You got 19 gold, girl. I want that 19 gold here. I'm going to sell you this sheet of paper that I just stole from you. And uh, and this book that I no longer need. And uh, here, take this flask of poison. Actually. Hang on, hang on. There's an optimal way to do this. One more gold. One more gold. Fuck it. That's fine. 
here. Take this stuff I just stole from you. In the meantime, your next stop will be Magister William. All passengers have to be registered in the ship's manifest, and he's the chap in charge of the logs. All right. You'll find him on the other side of this deck, in the officers' quarters. Cool. Uh, so muse that. <clears throat> By the room's shape, you can tell you're on Lucian class freight frigate. But why? Why? Because we're at sea, of course, and have been for several days. Oh. Index fingers pressed to her lips, she pauses a moment to give you a scrutinizing gander. Mm-hmm. My word, you do seem a bit befuddled, don't you? Perhaps I was a bit too generous with that sedative. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I'm sure you'll soon gather your wits. Most likely. Eventually. In the mm -hmm. meantime, all you need to know is that we're en route to Fort Joy. Mm-hmm. A new life awaits... And if you're a particularly good girl, perhaps a cure as well. An end to source for good. Oh my. Uh, uh, so many dialogue options. Why, for my peace of mind, of course. Why don't you try casting one of those source spells of yours? See what happens. You recall the power building inside you, the breaking of your shackles, the fury setting you free. Unleash it! The magic surge inside you, boiling, bursting, then breaking, only to fade back into your soul like rain into the earth. Oh. My, look at the concentration on your face. All will, but no result. Mm -hmm. There you have it. See? The collar's function. It neuters you of sorts mm. makes you unable to cast source i don't, I don't like that word own peace of mind of course yours and the whole world's uh, fuck it goodbye you got nothing else to say to you all right good gods there's there's been a murder there's here. been a murder it's an ugly sight isn't it let's see I'm a new game plus three in Bloodborne and finally bought the Old Hunters DLC. Nice. Congrats on getting the DLC. It's a very fun DLC. I hope you enjoy it, my friend. Burns me up this happened under our protection. We're extremely lucky no void walk and followed the source that did this. Uh, ask why she's letting you so close to the crime scene. For all you know, you could be she the killer. Looks up at you with a mirthless smile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on duty in your room when the murder happened. You were asleep the whole time. Didn't even stir. Yes. You're one of the only indisputably innocent people on the ship. Unless you can commit murder in your sleep, of course. Tell her that's a quick you a trick you have it quite I bastard. As much. Yep. Listen. I could use someone to keep their ears open among the passengers. Sometimes they clam up in front of a uniform. Mm -hmm. Bring me a good lead, and I'll throw in a shiny gold coin for you. How about that? I ain't no snitch! An elf of principle. I get it. Wonder how you'll feel when whoever did this does it again. Uh... You let me know if you hear anything. Whoever did this is dangerous. Sleep like a fucking baby, bitch. You don't know me. All right. So, just got to be careful not to accidentally steal anything in front of the magisters because they will fuck us up at this point in the game. Apple and a cup of tea? Yeah, I don't mind if I do. I don't think we'll need a log for any particular reason. All right. There is a buttload of dialogue in this room, which I have no intention of doing. Um... We got a bedroll. Bedrolls are extremely useful. They full heal you whenever you use them if you're out of combat. So now we do not have to worry about, you know, wasting potions and whatnot to get our health back. We're just going to loot this room and we will talk to these various people once we get to the next stage in the game. I don't believe there's any particular reason to talk to them right now. There's just far, far too many of them. Far too many of them. Now, we could actually attack the Magisters in this room, and all of these uh, sorcerers who have been shackled like us would actually help us in the fight, and we could win. 
but I don't think that's something that we need to do right now. Here's the register, ma'am. Good, good. Magister Williams is just about done with the last passenger. Aren't you a sweetie pie? Let's just try and sell some stuff. Because... Because... I think we're going to be able to get all of our stuff back once these boys are dead. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, let's do that. Faring okay so far? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. Glad to hear it. You head on in now. Williams will get you sorted fast. Thanks. Thanks. Well, you're certainly a pleasant magister. And if she tries to run, shoot to kill. What's happening here, though? Standing at the center of the room, you spot a sorcerer haughtily eyeing a pair of nervous looking magisters. They keep their crossbow trained upon her as she's being interrogated by an officer. Hmm. So you admit it then? You murdered that poor fella? Uh. Yes, I did. But of course, that was only the beginning. Oh? She turns her head and looks you straight in the eye. Oh? There are others whose lives must end. Hmm. Good God. The woman's mad. You there, sorcerer. Go and fetch Magister Siwan. We need to do more than collar this maniac. We need to shackle her hands and feet. <laughs> this may be the perfect opportunity to create a mutiny. Tell the woman you stand by her. Or I could address the sorcerer and ask her what she means by there are others whose lives must end. It means your journey draws to a close. Do stick around for its finale, though, because... She reaches for her collar and simply removes it. Oh my. I'm just about to create a scene. Oh my. So do her, man, quickly. If she casts source, the Void Woken will come. They'll end us all. She smiles with wicked satisfaction. Precisely. Oh dear. So we've been knocked unconscious. What's happened? Well, all of the magisters seem to have been turned into piles of goop. So let's go ahead and loot them. Take what little they have. That's a chest over there. Ooh. We've got a shield worth 60 gold. We got two shivs and an improvised staff worth 100 gold. Fuck yeah. So let's go ahead and combine that with our ooze barrel. And now we have Le Two Knives Dose, which is an improvement. Let's go ahead and grab all of the useful stuff in here. Pumpkin soup, bottles of wine are worth 20 gold a piece. 20 Skrillas, 20 bones. Bottle of wine, another bottle of wine, a chubby fish, and I don't think these plates, are these plates worth anything? No. Fuck your plate. I'll leave your plate there. Alright, let's see what we can find around here. Is this locked? That is locked, okay. couple of gold. Requisition. Yeah, I don't feel like reading your requisition. We'll take that, however. Aw, the friendly guard is dead. Let's take his key to the stern room. Claw, sheet of paper, raw mutton. I think some of that was stuff that I sold him. Penny button mushrooms are good. We can use those to make uh, lesser healing potions. A tooth, earth essence, yeah, yeah, yeah. All of the uh, non-consequential characters have died, and the few people who are still alive are other playable characters in the game. So we're gonna just leave them as they are for right now. Grab that bottle of beer. Yeah, I'll take these mugs of beer as well.
and I might actually grab the rest of these bad rolls just because they're worth 20 gold. We only need one, but uh, having a few extras isn't going to hurt anything. Booski. Oh, that's still locked. But I got the key to the stern room. Will it open this side? Let's go find out. These bed rolls off my bar. Nope. Alright, I don't know what the key to the stern room is for, but we have it. Oh, a couple bit more beer over here, I'll take that. And that. A dead sheep. Give me that mutton. Give me that sweet, sweet raw mutton. Nothing. Oh, nope, 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 nope. Sight, there's a barrel. Nothing in the barrel. And a couple more dead magisters. Grab a little bit of gold. Chunk of flesh. Oh, interestingly, we are an elf. And elves in this game have the unique feature of being able to consume uh, the flesh of the dead. To be able to, like, relive their memories and stuff. So, for example, let's try eating this. Flesh slides down your throat. You feel his consciousness enter yours. His memories are yours to experience. You are Finn. Your heart is heavy. You know too much. It's all too much. You met, you met him. A bright light blinds you, then fades. You feel a tremendous power in your hands, but they are shaking so hard you can barely use them. Suddenly, you're on this very ship, crouched in a corner, hugging your knees. A figure approaches, an older woman. Her eyes are kind. She comes closer. She says she wants to talk. She reaches a hand toward you. You grasp the memory's end. You are no longer Finn. You return to yourself with a jolt. Interesting. So, that would be an example of... how that all works. And, we learned... I guess you can actually learn skills and pick up various useful things by eating the body parts as an elf. So we learned the skill Adrenaline, which is one that we very much want. Um, do I want to drop Chicken Claw for Adrenaline now? No, we will get a lot more memory slots in the future. And bleeding from a dire looking wound. So we will be able to equip that skill soon, but we are going to need to level up before that happens. Uh, I don't like this bitch. She was rude to me, so I'm just going to kind of... Do some of this, some of that, and oh my god, fucking die. 100 XP, I'll take it. And we can get back the items that we sold her. So we kind of doubled our money a little bit there. What's this ancient book that she was... She's all about. The Source King insists there are no magics too foul, even those that would block or even remove the Source within an individual. I delight in his madness. It is an invitation to manipulate all which we once believed immutable. He provides all manner of experimental subjects. The text beneath lists a series of hexes, materials required for muting source. Some of those objects are circled in black ink and annotated as followed. Helm, collar, mask. Okay. It's not really worth anything, so let's just leave that there. And I feel like we've done everything that we needed to in here, so let us head up stairs. Ah, the hatch is blocked. I'll need to find another way. Hmm. How the fuck do I get out of here? Is it? I've done this before. You'd think I would remember. Oh, staircase right here. We good. We good, fam. <clears throat> Yeah, another level. Let's open this up. A uh, golden cup, don't mind if I do. Never know when you're gonna need a golden cup. 
garbage. Not worth anything. That doesn't bode well. Onwards and upwards. That is locked. Let's try. Hmm. Uh, I feel really bad about killing this doggo, but bear in mind this thing is a source hound. So source hounds are magister dogs that have been like created through fucked up means, and they are used to uh, to hunt sorcerers. So they're they're bad dogs. I'm sorry. I don't I don't feel good about killing a dog here, but it's what we're gonna do. Yeah yeah yeah. Sorry doggo. Ow, you hit hard. Fuck. All right, so we're gonna blink behind the dog. Gonna backstab. Gonna turn him into a chicken. Let's use flesh sacrifice to get one more AP. And backstab him one more time. Okay, cool. Doing damage does not break. Uh, polymorph effects, which is good to know. Nice, 25 XP. Lumpy giblets or something. Gross. Alright. Take that mug of beer. A little bit of gold. Hmm. So those doors are locked. <laughs> Not long before this thing snaps into splinters. Yes, yes, I know. Uh, bow. We're not going to use that, but we can sell it. A chest. Let's, uh. Oh. Can't do that. That didn't work. Just take a little damage there. Spread some water, put out that fire. A note, sure. Sure, I'll read a note. Murtoff, death fog barrels have been locked down in the storage. Stay out, you and Ricks both. If anybody starts fooling around on there, it'll be lights out. Yeah, death fog is bad stuff. Let's just get rid of that. We don't need it. You pass Hello. through the door and are suddenly face to face with an undead. His skull is bizarrely angular, and a glorious jewel sits in the middle of his forehead. The skeleton is quickly leafing through a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia, muttering to himself. No, no, no! What damn fools record knowledge on a pulped tree? It catches fire, it turns into must when wet, it cannot even resist acid! No wonder they're so bloody ignorant. I mean, you're not wrong. The skeleton looks up and notices you for the first time. Oh, yes? Shouldn't you be running or screaming or some such? Mm. Uh, shouldn't you be doing the same? The skeleton groans and looks back to his book, frantically flipping from page to page. I know your god did not gift you with much, but kindly use the little you were given. Do you look at me and think, why yes, there is someone with organs enough to drown? <sighs> Trifling matters like water and poison do not concern me. Mm. Nope. Damp robes are the most I have to fear. Once this glorified skiff hits the sea floor, I will simply walk to shore. Hmm. Whereas you, I believe, have lifeboats to pointlessly squabble over. Uh, yeah, he's right. Time to get the fuck Remember, out of Dodge. One of your race's weaknesses is having your lungs filled with water until you can no longer breathe. So, try to avoid that, perhaps. The skeleton yep. resumes his search. Leafing through page after page while hunching over the book in a futile attempt to keep it dry. Uh huh. All right. Good luck with your book, sir. That is Fane. That is one of the uh, playable characters, much like our elf here, whose name I should probably learn at some point. We are gonna finish looting the rest of this boat. I need to get off this wreck. Yes, yes. I know. Great gods! Something's pounding on the hull. The marking on the door was painted recently. Judging from its pungent scent, you recognize the symbol immediately for what it is. A warning of death fog within. You press your palm against the door to open it. The wood feels neither cold nor warm, but simply gray. The color drains from your hand, and you are left numb. It doesn't budge. The door groans open, but an ashen shadow clouds your mind. Mm. 
Okay, so we had the key to this room. This is Death Fog. Do not touch Death Fog. It is instant death unless you are playing an undead character like Fane, who we were just talking to. Never actually come in here before. I need to get out of here. Now. Can I loot that guy? YOLO. Ha <laughs> ha! Got an improvised wand for my risk taking. It's an extra 70 gold in the bank, boys. A couple of barrels and a bowstring. Alright. Alright. Uh, hey. Another barrel. Dead. 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 In that. A whole chest with nothing but two gold in it. Bullshit. That is going to be the way up to the top of the ship, I would imagine. But, there were some rooms back here that we were having trouble accessing. So let's see if we can get in there some way, somehow. I have not acquired the key anywhere. I can't pick the lock because I don't have any lock picks, but I could just attack it. Now, this is going to break my weapons with each attack, lowering their durability, but I want to kill these guys. He eyes the collar circling your neck and reaches a hand towards his blade. Another sorcerer. The Magister's companion doesn't blink, frozen in place at the sight of you. Uh, draw your weapon and be done with them. Rix raises his sword, which shakes to the rhythm of his... Oh, shit. Ouch. I probably should have healed before the fight. So we cannot polymorph this guy because he has magic armor, yes? Oh, it's resisted by physical armor. That's actually way better for us. Hey, alright, Exo Gaming. I'll see you later, man. Thank you for chilling. I'll take out this lad. Needs to kill him there. And it's a lot of AP. We need to get through that physical armor. What happens if I go invisible? Ha! <laughs> he couldn't do shit because he couldn't see me. That's beautiful. So we should just be able to finish him off like this. Nice. Got a little bit of bonus XP. No loot. Pretty sure all the paintings here are fake, so there's no point in taking them, correct? Yes. Let's grab that. That's actually an upgrade right there. Two physical armor. And way more saucy. <laughs> way more saucy. Not sure how uh, that makes any kind of sense, but yeah, I'm not going to complain. Take that quill. Cup of water, don't think I need that for anything. Take that ink pot. Some leggings, also an upgrade. One physical armor, bottle of beer, trap disarm kit. Don't mind if I do. Right. And I really don't feel the need to read your journal. So we are just gonna rest and get the fuck out of Dodge. I believe it was over here. Yes, up to the top of the ship. Let's see what's going on on the surface. There is something very large banging on the ship, so uh, that's probably not good. But hey, what do I know? Oh my. As a large tentacle. We are going to move forward just a scoosh. And start killing these large grubs. Yeah, alright, one dead. That's 100 XP. Can I get behind you? 
Scheiße. Much better. Actually gonna take a little bit of damage here. Get an extra action point so we can attack one more time. And kill the bitch. Take those giblets. See if this Magister had anything on his body. Just some gold. Check that Magister as well. Ooh, a scroll of fireball. Nice. So that's going to be a one-time use of the magic spell fireball, which can be useful. Sometimes... Sometimes you want to light the battlefield on fire, and that is going to be very useful for said thing that we might want to do. Is there anything up here? There are some dead magisters, so maybe we can run through this fire really quick. Ooh. Probably should have waited for it to just burn out. That's fine. But we're fine. Uh, scroll of Blinding Radiance. Nice. And a wand. These are all things that we can sell for cash. Raw rabbit meat sitting in a box, perfectly normal. No reason to question it. Let's just head over to the lifeboat. Top off our health. Oh, that's the crate that was blocking that other stairway. Oh my. Oh my. Well, okay. Didn't want to loot that crate anyways. Children and dwarfs first, just like the old stories say. The dwarf yanks at one of the nearby ropes to know of them. But there are other people down here. We we need to help them. You see those tentacles, kid? It's time for getting the hell out of here. Uh The ship trembles beneath your feet, but the kid's right. Say you'll go back to the lower deck and look for survivors. Sure. Alright, so we have a short little quest to try and save the others, which I think will yield some XP, so let's do it. Any opportunity to kill stuff is going to be a good source of XP, and thus worth doing. Let's go ahead and go invisible. And end our turn. Oh! That's my boy Beast over there. That was my character in my uh, personal playthrough that I was doing. So I have a fondness for him. I thought Void Worker was supposed to be scary. I've faced worse. They who are about to triumph. Yes, yes. Doing a lovely job, fam. So this is Losa. I think she is going to be our second companion. My other playthrough, I was Beast and Ifon right here, these two guys. I think we're going to take Losa just to, uh, so that I'm not playing with the same characters again. Because each one of these characters has their own individual, like, campaign storyline. And I would like to do one that I haven't done yet. The Red Prince is also super cool, but I'm not ready to play with him just yet. I'll probably play with him for a mage build. Which I'm sure we'll do at some point, because I fucking love this game. Alright, so we got some XP from that. Uh, let's just go ahead and loot these Void Woken real quick. These hatchlings, see if they've got anything worth having. Not really. Let's get back to the deck. And feel proud of ourselves for not being selfish. And going back to help. Alright, 
We got 800 XP for uh, going back to help, which I would say is worth it. But we did not make it to the lifeboat. And now that thing is crunching our ship. So we're dead. Good game, everyone. And now we're drowning. I have plans for you, John. Right. Honorable Dallas, we lost a ship sailing sorcerer prisoners to Fort Joy. We assume some escaped and broke their collars. Their vile magic lured the Voidwoken. All who were aboard are presumed dead. Yours faithfully into eternity. High Judge Orivan. Hmm. All right, so we are now, as soon as this loading screen is done, going to find ourselves on the island that was our destination. This is the island of Fort Joy. Uh, this island is the place where they send all of the captured Dallas sorcerers. Death before, but that was a particularly intimate place. Yes, yes. So we have made it through the tutorial. We are now on Act One. Uh, the island of Fort Joy, and we're going to start clearing this out next time. If you are watching this on YouTube, I am going to be breaking these up into roughly hour-long segments for the sake of your viewing pleasure, so that I'm not uploading a four to eight hour VOD of just Divinity. So that's where we're going to call it for the first episode, but if you're watching this live on Twitch, we will obviously be continuing for the next several hours. Uh, so if you're watching this on YouTube, look forward to the next episode probably tomorrow. Love your faces, uh, Stubbleheart, and I'll see you guys next time.